I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. We've got Rob, and we've got Hi. Neegs here today. How's it going, guys? It's going good. How about you, Neegs? Oh, that's going pretty good. Uh, I think today we'll go mostly on news, and then a little bit of uh, side topics, and then, yeah, let's start. Yeah. Let's see let's how go. fast we can do this one. We were like two hours on the last one. So, yeah, yeah. I'm still tired yeah. from that. It wasn't one. intended, right? But we went <laughs> yeah. through the news and yeah. then, yeah. you know, we talk. I mean, I don't think they even imagine what's happening off record. And yeah. We spend so many hours on that because we, we're very opini opinionated people. We're very opinionated <laughs> to the point where sometimes you guys don't hear it, but we'll argue. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, so, so we've got recording, news. Stop recording. Right? <laughs> what, what, what? I'm sorry? <laughs> no, we're arguing, so stop recording quick. Stop recording, exactly. Yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> Neeks has all the raw edits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by exactly. the way, I have the you, final Neeks. words with the edit. Yeah. That's Hunter. right. Yeah. yeah. He, he uses good. AI. He changes what we say in there. No, I'm kidding. No, actually, um, I was doing a lot of work on yeah. cutting the audio to make it look really the cleanest possible in the beginning. But now that we have avatars, if I do that, it, it kind of looks strange on jacks the, up, the uh, avatar part. So I don't, I don't do as much. You hear about, mm, um, um, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. That's a lot. But of anyway, I know. <laughs> I just want to make sure I make this statement. Having produced, wow, I've produced a lot of different podcasts and videos for different people. It takes a lot of time to take yeah. that audio and that video and trim it and put it together. So, again, if you're listening to this and you don't know, Nigs puts in all the time to do this. Anybody can, anybody in the community can. If you take any of those audios and videos, you can make little, what do they call them? Shorts. shorts you can make yeah. little TikTok videos out of them. You can do whatever you want, but he's doing all the hard work. Um, so thank you, Neeks. Thank you so thank much. You. It is true. That's my pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been a lot better also. Like in the beginning, we kind of were a lot less confident and kind of messing up a lot more. So I had also to do a lot more work. Now, I think that beside the technical limitations, we could just go live for the most part. Um, but yeah, uh, technically, that, that would be a little bit difficult. We'll go live. We'll just have to have some gloves on and put the <laughs> mute button every once in a while. Maybe we can address the potential new um, avatars, or do you want to do that now? Or do nah, you I you surprise like? them. I don't know. I mean, if you can transition. Them. Let's do it next time. We'll, we'll show them and we'll... We'll take a poll. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll take a poll. That. Yeah. Maybe There's so. Some in the so works. pay attention. <laughs> yeah. I know that's been some of the comments. Look, it's, you know, we're putting in our own time. We're community members doing this, you know, so preferably myself and they already know my opinion. I'd rather just do podcasts. We could still do images and stuff like that. I'd rather not have avatars, but I'm okay with this avatar. And there's other avatars that you guys can give some inputs on. So, um anyway so that's it. the news Updates. yeah we got all sorts of crazy things happening today right yeah so we yep. can start with the bitcoin rebound right yay so, yeah uh, we <laughs> don't know does. for how yeah. long i think it was also triggered by uh what happened like one and a half week ago i mean i i guess we don't want to spend too much time about that but pretty crazy in us and so i yeah. think after that there was some kind of rally um, in the whole market, and yeah. definitely we're seeing we're seeing some good moves. I, it I is, but I mean, it, even right, right? even right now it's down a little bit, right? I mean, it was it went up above sixty eight, and now it's down to sixty five just today, right? I mean, so is at it, the time okay. of this recording, sixty five. Wow. I yeah, sixty five right now. Huh. Sure is. It is. Um, yeah, but I mean, you can. I think you can say names here. I mean, I think Trump getting shot, and then. Oh yeah, you know, doing what he did and really energizing his base, and and Trump's side being thought of as the pro Bitcoin side, I think that energized the, the price of Bitcoin a lot. Especially, there's a lot of like, sure. oh, this is this is this is Trump's to lose from here. Like, I, so I, there's a lot of positivity around Trump, and I think that was that's why it was good for Bitcoin. The other thing is Germany stopped selling. Um, that, uh, that's actually, over. Maybe before we move to Germany, we can, as you are on the Trump topic, yeah. we might yeah. actually jump directly to uh, Trump declaration that he says that 
He wants U.S. to take charge for a leading role in crypto uh, before China does. I think it was really an amazing uh, declaration because putting that on the level of versus China makes it now one of uh, like a financial priority for U.S. So that would be really insane. Uh, I'll just never get this point of view. Uh, uh, Crypto and Bitcoin are technologies. It doesn't matter where you are. You want to be the best, most foremost in any new technology, period. There's never been a time in history yeah. where technology comes out and they're able to squash it. It's never happened. There's whole stories about Luddites. There's whole stories about sewing machine people, uh, you know, saying the sewing machines are going to ruin all their... In every case, more jobs come from better technology and trying to quash it is always the wrong approach every single time. <laughs> And well, yeah, nuts. when you're talking about sewing machines and Luddites and all, all yeah. these different things, just because you increase, you, you create sewing machines, it allows you to produce more. Well, when you can produce more with less time, it lowers the expense. And so then more people can buy. So you have this, 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 um, it's not a double edged sword, but it's a, it's kind of a win win. Now you broaden yeah. your market. Now you have yeah. more clients. Now it's you're a doing, growing pie. You're, able to do, you're growing everything. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And so, it drives me nuts that there's a side that says Bitcoin bad. It's a technology. It's more, it's an economy. There's other things, but to, to the idea that it will be quashed and controlled in the way that they're thinking, like it, it's something that is, isn't global. Yeah. You want to be first. You want this country, the best in AI, in blockchain, in space, yeah. in you, you know, all of the things and the idea to, it should be quashed is nuts. So yeah, I think yeah. that governments, kind of always react like that, right? Like most of the time, they're very late on understanding the actual technology and Mm -hmm. the new breach in, you know, uh, new approach and all that. They're really usually um, reinforcing the actual system because they rely on it. And so obviously most of the time they're not really welcoming new things like that. I think it's a little bit different than sewing machines or uh, automation or things like that because even if you know bitcoin technology or the blockchain technology the digital ledger distributed is is great its success as um an economy like as a an economic tool yeah. wasn't guaranteed because for this you really need to have you know for an asset to appreciate it needs to have supporters right so it's a little bit different than um Sewing machines just boosted production. Right? Well, yeah, you're Automation talking about utility and production need reduced as the cost. No. something that we're I, speculating I so. in. Yeah, I don't think so, though, because sewing machines, as an example, uh, it had supporters and it had people against it, absolutely against it. Horrible new machines. Same with internal combustion engines. Same thing happened. Same with photography, it happened. Uh, it, there's definitely a group of people that it is affected, that they fear the technology, it affects them. And there's a whole so, group of people saying, you're the bad guy for promoting this. Yeah. So the problem isn't, isn't here. Uh, uh, the problem I was mentioning wasn't this one. The problem mm. I was mentioning is that there is an undeniable um, added production with those machines, right? Yeah. And so with crypto, it is a different way to take the system. But right now, for a lot of things, it's actually not as efficient as the centralized system, right? Totally, right. So what forces the government to now look into it, it's because it's getting support. Like if anyone was getting any support, like if enough people would get support to one currency, it cannot be neglected anymore. Like it, it's just like they're forced to Uh, look into it, right? Yeah. So, and and because I think that whenever Trump says that, or the, like government people say that, I don't think they think so much about the technology. I think they think they more about the Bitcoin as a currency, right? And not really an investment. Uh, distributed. Yeah. I don't think so. Not a currency, ledger. as an investment. That's what they think about. Yeah, also, yeah, so, exactly. Also yeah. that, but yeah, that's right. Also an investment, but not really the technology and the infrastructure, <laughs> the, the advantage in the infrastructure, the decentralized aspect. I don't think they really consider any of that currently maybe it will come but i think for now it's only the the fact that it's a digital currency that they look you're asking so politicians to even pay attention to this stuff and the fact that they mention it every time they mention it they have such a surface level or 
misinformation and everything that comes out of their mouths. I don't think we can think that they think about much except for what they perceive people will find positive in their in their rhetoric, right? So I'm looking for support in something or I have to garner the support in a certain group of people. I'm going to say something positive, but to say that um that that Trump really grokks this technology is is i i don't think that's necessarily true today and i'm not saying he's not capable i'm just saying <laughs> that don't think that would be true of all politicians yeah. this that's moment right time yeah i think that's it's right. more about whether we're allowed to have it and we're like what you're pointing out was whether the government should embrace it i'm not even saying that just let us have it let us develop let us make things with it that's it sure. like they don't have to do anything just stop being against it <laughs> right, right. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, freedom, right? like I would love free to do what we want. for the, the topic to be this one, but I don't think it's this one. It's yeah. either they ban it or they put their hands all around it. That's pretty right. much the way. I think they just step works. out of the way. That's what they should do. I would love that. Yeah, but you but, know, yeah. But he's saying that's not one of the options on the table for no, them. No, I don't think for them they see it <laughs> yeah. like that, right? It's either yeah. they don't want to hear about it because they have their system, otherwise they want it to bend a little bit to what they want. Yeah, yeah. All right, what else Well, we it's good no matter cool. what. Cool, so I guess yeah, now that we really talked about the rebound, it. you can talk about more sales. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, the next, the next uh, hurdle to get over here. Uh, so we talked about the German government that ended. That's good, uh, but then now there's there's we are, have Mount Gox that yeah, we got to talk selling. about because that's not ending. <laughs> so, no, it's not ending. It's yeah, not ending. So that's we right. Have, we have another hurdle until October for that one. Yeah. So last time we mentioned that um, they started to send to people directly, and then for people who ask to receive on exchange, it would be a little later. And now basically we have um, information that Kraken started to receive some money. So um, they say that they expect to have the full payout within the next seven to 14 days. So it means that they are receiving crypto um, to users who ask to get crypto on exchange. So we don't, we don't know what it will do, but it might, might create some more pressure. Um, yeah. We will see. Yeah, so just to clarify that, what's happening is people were uh, were owed money or owed Bitcoin from this from this uh, you know from the release from Mt. Gox, and they gave Kraken addresses as the place to send it to. That's the way I'm understanding that, right? Well, I think that's what we're guessing. Yeah, because yeah, I was yeah, surprised right? based on when the hack happened. I mean, there, yeah. there's kind of no other. Um, you're kind of no other option, right? Yeah, there was no um, Kraken when there was Mt. Gox, so it has to be, like, there's not some other relationship. It has to be these people right. said, send it And here. it's not only Kraken. There are a few exchange. Um, I wasn't uh, in the process. I didn't lose money in Mt. Gox. Uh, unfortunately, almost nowadays. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I guess that they've been proposed to give either a wallet or maybe some specific exchange maybe some were validated pre-validated um yep i i don't know the details but it was already mentioned in the last uh, news that i've seen a few weeks ago where yeah. they say that basically first people re will get um for their individual wallets and then for exchange it will be a little later and looks like it's starting now yeah i i just was surprised you know because kraken did launch a, a little bit after mount gox so it had to have been KYC centered information that people shared here deposit to my uh, exchange address kind of a situation. Right, That's what right. I was guessing. For those uh, for those repayments, they had to make claims, right? Like they really yeah, had to yeah. move forward, yeah, make claims, for get validated. Um, I remember you mentioned last time that someone even told you that even if they went through that, they were still refused, even if they have everything to show that they actually had money on their yeah, account. Yeah, well, we both know somebody who has all the e has all the emails uh, that they've received from the setup of the uh, Mt. Cox account, um, even following through with transactions uh, that they had um, processed through Mt. Gox, you know, the emails and the confirmations of that. They also have the withdrawals history from all the Mt. Gox. They still own the address or the wallet, I should say the wallet address, the private keys to that, of the receiving address. But 
for some reason, even though they've KYC'd, they state Mount Gox does, or at least the receivers there, the the attorneys or whoever's doing the auditing and editing for the KYC, they can't find the account. <laughs> so it's, oh, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to be on top of that stuff. So in the same news, they say that um, founds to BitBank and SBI VC trade to Japanese exchange that I, I didn't mm-hmm. know about. Um, already received and already apparently distributed the funds uh, to all their users. Apparently, they have That's two good. weeks to do it once they receive it, and it was done within hours. And other uh, are supposed to receive BitGo, BitStamp, and then a uh, Kraken. So That's I guess good. those That's were good. kind of pre-approved. And if you created an account there or something, you could ask. I don't know the detail, but I would expect it, it went like that. Well, no matter what, I think it's better if users get their crypto as opposed to uh, having like what uh, German Germany did with just dumping it all in the market. As I've stated before, it's better to have everything spread out. That's distributed, you know, in, in any sort of a blockchain, you want to see a good distributed weight of your coins everywhere, the work everywhere. When you have everything in one big one big bag and you dump it all at once it kind of ruins it 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 produces too much liquidity at one time so i think it's okay that people are getting their crypto back i think it's good then they can hold it they can sell it they can do whatever they want yeah that's good yeah talking about cryptos being held up what about etfs (laughs) yeah so more more etfs coming so definitely the etf sites for ethereum are kind of exploding. There have been more submission. And I mean, I, I found something that was pretty funny um, mm-hmm. because this whole environment usually of uh, ETFs is more like the banking industry, right? But now we see those uh, ETF products called Rekt and Lambo. So we definitely <laughs> see uh, yeah. the crypto, the I wouldn't yeah, say the the best yeah, the part DGen, of crypto that yeah, is uh, right, that the is DGen, getting uh, <laughs> persona getting affect getting infiltrating the banking system. I mean, yeah. you knew it was in there anyway, right? You've seen Wall Street movies, like <laughs> it was in there anyway. But now, now it's like part of the the marketing for it. So I I get it. We'll probably see more of it. There's been uh, lots of lots of talk about you know all of yeah. this pretty pretty good excitement. Um, on Twitter, right. you know, right. So you see that and you see the volumes that are going, um, I think at last I checked, it was like 500 million had gone through. Maybe that was an hour or two ago, but, uh, there's lots of people FOMOing into these ETFs. It seems to be. That's right. I think there were some important ones, um, releasing today. Uh, we're the 23rd, uh, when we're recording BlackRock and, and Van Eck, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, uh, the market, uh, drops and I see a comment right in Discord right now, which is asking, um, why everything goes down when the ETF is launched. I guess this is how the market works, right? It's always a lot of anticipation before things, uh, goes, go out. And then, uh, finally, when they are out, uh, people kind of set out. Like that's the that's the way it works in crypto, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and then after it recovers, it's always like that. But then you have some actors who are actually traders, and they are trading those moments. They're mm-hmm. trading those moments. You have yeah. big yeah. players that that you know you're talking oh, yeah. about questions about the market, and then you have people who see these kinds of posts by people who are excited about it. We talk about DGEN stuff and you talk about somebody like Richard Hart, right? That's DGEN of DGENs, <laughs> um, you know, and he's really excited and he goes right into attacking Sailor, right? <laughs> so like, <laughs> I mean, the post has 30,000 views so far, you know, so he's attacking Michael Saylor for being Bitcoin only, Um accuses him of being a closet monopolist <laughs> you know <laughs> un-american unpatriot typical richard hart kind of things hmm. and then you look at the the posts that have received a lot of um at least eyeballs and you got blackrock that's really pushing their etf and how easy it is and it's a pretty generic video um but it does in some ways attack proof of work a little bit um, and then Van Eck goes right for it. Van Eck 
just directly goes to the fact that you know it's not uh, the ethereum etfs um are 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 focused on a utility currency that's not consuming a lot of resources essentially i'm really paraphrasing a lot there but i mean they really go into needling that where blackrock soft states that it's more you know you invest in bitcoin because and again i'm going to paraphrase because it's a true statement you're speculating and you're hopeful in the future that enough people will want it that it'll be worth a lot more <laughs> that's essentially and then you're investing in ethereum because it's the utility currency <laughs> that's what i mean so right. they're all attacking bitcoin at this moment <laughs> Can I, uh, before we go into the very next one, can I bring up CrowdStrike? Because it, these two are very similar. Oh, yeah. So, so CrowdStrike, you know, there's big news. It it doesn't affect, it mostly doesn't affect individuals because you guys, you know, individuals generally don't use that. Uh, so, you, like, individuals' Windows machines didn't go down. But mm -hmm. huge banking and airline and, you know, all these people, all of these companies that are relying on, on, um, on Microsoft products, um, use CrowdStrike to help bolster the security of the Microsoft products. That's that's the way I can think of it. Yeah. And so they're using this one company, and and it's the I think it's the most popular company for for adding security to the the basic package. Uh, and they <laughs> they put it out an update, and their process apparently either on per you know allows one person to do this or mm -hmm. or made a hole such that one person could do it um and it was it was mistaken it was a mis it was a bad update and you you have more technical information on that right no voice sorry you described that better than i just did yeah, yeah. crowdstrike crowdstrike essentially issued an update that everybody auto installed and uh, yeah, having talked with somebody who is very knowledgeable about C++, it was a very amateur or very um, surprising error for somebody to make who would be um, at least skilled at development in C++ because essentially when Windows machines loads, mm -hmm. it loads all your drivers and all those kinds of things. And essentially the... Um, the app that had the update said, look here for some information and that look here doesn't exist. So Windows, of course, crashes immediately. It was which is it. You'd think Windows lame. could could accept that a little more gracefully. However, that's what happened. Uh, and it's it's this is a simple a symbol, a symbol, a symptom of mm. of kind of when uh, of monopolistic issues. So I'm not saying CrowdStrike's a monopoly, but when you have a monopoly, that kind, those kind of errors that affect everybody, if yeah. it happens even when you, you know, not a monopoly, but a large portion of the market from one company, it affects huge swaths of people because everybody does the same thing. Oh, it's good for you. I'm going to do this. You know, uh, American Airlines does this. I'm Spirit Airlines. I'm going to do this too. And it affects all of them. Yeah, um, yeah. That's right. And yeah. like, if you actually think about the fact that it is a cybersecurity company, right? So the right. whole <laughs> the whole goal of that thing is supposed to yeah. protect them to keep their infrastructure online. And <laughs> you can they really attack see their that, own clients. That, yes. Unintentional, angles, right? Like, right? definitely, <laughs> companies should have processes. They should probably not implement updates without being tested to the live environment. But really, I don't think this is the angle that we want to take here. It's more about like having that thing that is a centralized infrastructure, like a centralized infrastructure point where sure. so much of the infrastructure is now relying on that it makes it, uh, first of all, obviously a target, but also a very dangerous weak point for all your infrastructure now. So, okay, so well, externally, so go ahead. I want to I switch subjects here, right? Because this is exactly what I wanted to point out. This It's clear, this is a symptom of a centralized process. So now let's go to a decentralized process, right? So we, lots of people think if it's on blockchain, it's decentralized. So now we're going to talk to LiFi, talk about LiFi, yeah. li.fi. So you can see what I'm talking about. You can look it up. Mm -hmm. uh, so $12 million hack, right? Uh, and that's a bridge. Um, and... So here it is. It's a decentralized platform. It's on Ethereum and so on. Uh, and what happened? It's human error again, right? It's a smart contract that lives right. on a blockchain. It's a trust minimize, right? 
because you say decentralized, but uh, yeah, it is someone right. so who updated a smart contract. So that means that right. there is a multi-sig wallet there. Yeah. So a few people who can control this whole contract, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so you could say that same thing about CrowdStrike is if, you know, it may have been one person, but sh certainly there is more than one person that helped with that uh, yeah. or put in processes to let that happen. And here, more than one person. The decentralized part isn't the smart contract, right? It, the decentralized part is the Ethereum blockchain. That's right. And so we think of this, uh, not we, I don't, but lots of people think of it's on blockchain, it's decentralized. That's not true. Right. The, if it's a smart contract, you can't think of a smart contract in and of itself as a decentralized thing. It is being deployed or uh, say it's being supported in a decentralized way. Yes, the smart that is contract true. Most itself, people don't realize that they're yeah. completely centralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The smart contract it, itself is centralized. Um, and, I mean, you could say ahead. the same thing about, let's say, Bitcoin core code. It's all centralized. Mm -hmm. It's in one repo. Um, it's all yeah. done that way, but it isn't the same. It 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 appears the same, but it's not the same. This so you have this one code... critical difference, right? So yeah. you have smart contracts that are not modifiable, but mm -hmm. the actual major majority of um, smart contracts are hold like held by a multi sig contract, and they mm -hmm. can change anything anytime. And so. Um, Unlike uh, Bitcoin, where if the Bitcoin Foundation was pushing an update, I mean, you can definitely have a fork and like people like validators, miners on the Bitcoin side will decide what they want to support. For the smart contract, you don't Not have true. a vote. Like they right. just have the multi-sig, they push the command, click enter, deploy the thing, and that's done. And that's exactly what happened here, right? Like yep. it is, like, they are proposing some kind of cross-chain mechanism and we've seen that all those cross-chain mechanisms that rely on smart contract they definitely um we've seen major issues there a lot of money lost and that's that's just one more yeah. of those like basically they had something that was running that people were trusting and all of a sudden they, can't, they couldn't trust it anymore thing. because yeah. the private party pushed something without others really knowing and that's and that's how it ended up right so i think yeah. that can, can it is I, a great uh, way to plug our side chains. Can I leave? Oh, uh, totally. I was going to drive back to Divi. That's exactly what I was going to. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Go ahead. The same page there, right? So that is the fundamental difference. So uh, one of the things that Divi and side chains are going to be is that's a that's a a transfer of your value from what from the Divi blockchain to one of those side chains, which those side chains are you know they work. Kind of, you know, kind of like uh, Cosmos sidechain. You know, those those are still funds there. That's a that transfer is not through smart contracts. Uh, almost yeah. every other, except for Cosmos, which has a hub and can move uh, funds into their side chains. That's that's like that. But for this, it could be any tech, any kind of anything that has this technology. It can move funds without this human error prone hackable bridge. Right, that that you trust the smart contract maker, you trust the relay network, uh, you trust all the parts from one side to another side uh, to to be good, to work, to be unhackable, to be written right. For yeah. for you to move funds from Divi to a side chain, that's down in the infrastructure, the layers layer zero of of the blockchain. Yeah, uh, where all of that happens, and there's so no, there's no there's no uh, possibility of of somebody doing something wrong, changing some code, it's not modifiable. It's you know it it's the same as you described how things get deployed at the Bitcoin level. It could it could cause a fork. Uh, people may want to have this a divvy with this feature and not, but the the fact of the matter is, most people are going to want this feature, and that feature is going to be inside the infrastructure of the divvy blockchain and not something put on top of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's that's it's right. smart and contracts. Smart contracts are given authority, and that authority is to take ownership of your currency, and then they can update where that currency resides. They can make payouts from that currency from different wallets. Mm -hmm. It's very different. It, it, is, it, uh, is, it is almost escrow-like in a way that you're trusting a smart contract that's separate and it's off chain. It is not on chain. It has to be, of course, um, compiled and then it can be deployed, which means you can then run it on the Ethereum virtual machine. But it 
isn't on the blockchain all the time unless you're committing some transaction that is chain state changing. Um, that's really technical, but that means that it's, it's not just reading data, but it's actually changing data, some history and some amount or some ownership on chain. You, we're, you're giving up some of your authority when you do that. So this falls under trust minimized, maybe? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Yes, um, I think it does. Um, so I think what you described in the beginning still kind of described a little bit uh, the side chains, right? Because you definitely send your found on it. However, the mm -hmm. difference is not controlled by a small group of people. It is a blockchain that is secured by its own set of validators. Yep. And, and so obviously it is a completely different model than having a few people having control and having the arbitrary decision to push something that nobody else can reject, right? It's a very different model. Another thing that I think is not well understood is that when you go on those DeFi platforms, it's not one smart contract. It is dozens of smart contracts. That thing is extremely complex and it's very easy to have problems into it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it is, and that's also why you end up with tons of fees because when you're trying to do one thing, the smart contract actually has different, like several smart contracts that are deployed and interacting with each other. And for each contract, you will have to pay because each one is a set of instructions. So you will need to pay for all that. And all of that includes... Uh, attack vectors, uh, weakness, centralized point, and, and obviously that's exactly what we want to get rid of with the sidechains. Yeah, it's all on chain. Yeah. And that's the. Key I uh, thing. so I boosted Cosmos there, and and, and si Divi sidechains is not like like uh, Cosmos. It's, it's it's not so bad to move funds around the Cosmos universe, but try to get to another blockchain. Um, and that you cannot. That's kind yeah. of, you can't. Um. And so that's kind of a neat part about the, the, the Divi sidechains is those sidechains, if another blockchain deploys that technology, you can get there safely in the same safe way. Exactly. I think, I think that's uh, it's a fundamental difference and it, it fundamentally clears up all of the uh, these issues about bridges getting hacked and, and funds getting lost, billions of dollars. It's, it happens so often it's, now. It's on chain. There is no escrow situation. Uh, people can use escrow functions where they participate together in it, or maybe it's even a, a larger group. Maybe it's a business, maybe something else. But when you participate with on-chain and the ownership, sovereign ownership, the permissions of what you do, you're, you enter into the contract knowing you have full ownership until something executes or something changes, where, again, smart contracts don't offer that same um, um, I would say standing is probably, you know, you say legal standing. I have a legal standing. I have an ownership. I have a standing here. Once you give it over to the smart contract, it's whatever's in the contract. Yeah. On, yeah. On an that, it, we're back to the centralized kind of everywhere. world. So now again. that doesn't mean that um, side chains are restricted, right? Like no. In reality, mm -hmm. um, malicious people could still decide to start a sidechain. However, the requirement to be able to start a sidechain, to get validators that are supporting your use case, and then gain now enough of users to reward those validators, yeah. um, it makes it a little harder uh, for yeah. scammers. Correct. But again, like yeah. the problem is if you would want to restrict that, then now you're restricting um, invention, yep. creativity. Yep. So you need to leave that open. It is a major part of technology. It needs to have a lot of failures and a lot of bad mm -hmm. things to mm -hmm. have a few that are actually getting out. And I think the sidechain model um, kind of reinforces the ones that want to develop good things and makes it a little less simple for the ones who, who right. have the, bad The friction you know, to scam intentions. is much higher. Yeah. <laughs> this is the way I like That's to right. think about the it. That's right. The friction reward exactly. for yeah. those who build good things is also yeah. much higher. So exactly. That yeah. means that we really, yeah. I think, push the right people or the right part of the industry. Yep. I think so too. Yeah. You guys want to talk about uh, this interesting story about uh, Virgil Griffith? Uh, right. I think jail. that's an interesting one. Um, mm -hmm. So it is not directly crypto, right? 
Um, but uh, this mm-hmm. person went in, I think it's in 2021, um, went in North Korea to make a presentation about um, crypto, right? But I think it was, um, if I read correctly, was mainly about evading sanctions with crypto. We don't have much details, really. Um, they have There are some reports that this conference was only officials, that it wasn't really... But at the end of the day, uh, the person asked for permission to go there from the U.S. Um, government, and he was refused, and he still decided to go there. So, and I'm pretty sure that's can, why he's in jail and not the other stuff. Um, yeah, we can think about it in a <laughs> yeah. blockchain vi- vision, which you know the crypto news seems to uh, you know take the position on. But realistically, mm-hmm. it seems that the guy really went against a very clear. Uh, indication from the State Department and still decided to go and it's kind of difficult without having the details of what he really did. Yeah, um, yeah. To, I, we, to take we position know on he, that, I think. But he yeah. admitted, even on Twitter, and I think that's some of those tweets. Who found those? I don't remember who it was. but I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he admitted that he knew it wasn't a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Yeah, I've, I've seen yeah. that. But, yeah. but let's say <laughs> the guy was actually just advocating for crypto and it's actually for him not related to sanctions and and of course he can know it's a bad idea but still consider it's uh you know he wants to do it because he's behind crypto we have just yeah i don't know i don't know I yeah I, I was, it's I was the same thing as for... samurai wallet you don't yeah. just you don't just go and say hey i know you want to break the law and you want to evade sanctions use our tool if somebody says, <laughs> yeah. you know, hey, you That's know, right. the, the the assumption is is that they wanted to, to thwart the sanctions again. That's what that's what the claim is. Um, you don't say, hey, yeah, <laughs> I'll show yeah. up and be a key speaker. Yeah, but see, it this is kind of confusing, right? Because I doubt he sent a request to the U.S. government. Hey, I want to talk to that conference <laughs> yeah, exactly. about evading sanctions. I, I really <laughs> doubt course. that. Of course, yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, right. so, I know. Yeah. so I don't know. I, so, I don't know I, if they decided to evade sanctions or if the content of his presentation was oriented like that. We, we don't have really. <laughs> yeah. If anybody has yeah. the uh, has the actual presentation he gave, I would love to see. It. I've been awesome. looking around for it. Definitely. I found this. I found this one slide that Roger Ver concocted, which I thought was funny. <laughs> Roger Ver, it, it, it's, it's got it's got Virgil Griffith on stage presenting, and on the back it says, "How I evaded sanctions, and you can too, using Ethereum to evade sanctions in 2019." So. I, at first, I thought, "Oh my God, he really did that!" And then, and then no, <laughs> I, he, it's it's, it, but it's pretty funny um, yeah. because I, I think what he did was present all of this stuff with the kind of thing saying we can work on a different economy that's not fiat based. And if you say that, that's that's literally it, it translates to here's how you avoid financial sanctions. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. it, it's what he. Sh- it, and he also got rid of all of his plausible di- deniability by, um, you know, posting that, that he knew it was probably not a good idea to do this by asking permission and then going anyway. I mean, he he got rid of all the plausible deniability that he could possibly have had. Um, and, you know, yeah, well, super I, I from of, Vitalik, right? Yeah, he did. But <laughs> honestly, I, like when we were talking about this before, if, I had hoped and thought maybe he went there to give a presentation to people in uh, North Korea. Not that I thought that that would be possible, but I was hoping yeah. that's what the idea was. But it, it clearly is not. That's not what happened. And he knew that's not what's going to happen. So, um, again, I think that I've read the things that you're mm-hmm. reporting. Yeah. But I also understand that we don't really know. Right. Not true and enough. that. It is the version that is reported. Yeah. Like we can, I think we can say that the version that is reported is that the conference was only officials mm-hmm. and all that. But realistically, yeah. it's difficult. There, there hasn't been much detail. If I read correctly, uh, the guy pleaded guilty, so there hasn't been like a public thing about it where we have all the details, like some of like some of the trials yeah. that happened and are more public. So we don't we don't really know. Um, but yeah, it seems that. Uh, Vitalik was giving him his support. He tried to uh, get his sentence reduced. Actually, his sentence was reduced by. Uh, it was. Months. I think that's why he pleaded yeah. guilty, right? Like, because that's a twenty-year sentence he could have had. So, right. 
That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, he, but initially he was uh, sentenced to 63 months and now mm. he's that's uh, 50, 56, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So he just, uh, and I think that was the core of the news. But um, Vitalik advocated for him to have his sentence reduced. So I would, I don't know, I would imagine that this guy was not just evading sanctions because why would you give him support then, right? That's kind of strange, but yeah. We'll... I don't know. I guess maybe Vitalik doesn't know what he was doing either. Like I, I, He probably knows him as maybe. a person, and I suspect he is a person like don't like you and I, don't like our systems that are in place that hold people down and devalue their money and tax the poor through inflation. Like We don't like any of that stuff. We see this as a way to go forward, and he was probably in, trying to evangelize Sure, in but some you way, wouldn't I, go make a presentations to officials of that kind of Smart people country, doing dumb right? things. <laughs> That's the same with samurai wallet. Smart yeah. people doing dumb yeah. things. I, I just, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like it's like I don't know. It's like little kids. Hey, don't touch that. Hey, don't touch that. Yes, but I. Ow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you yeah. Don't. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so let's move on to the next one. For sharing, who you're knows? right. We don't have enough information. We probably never will yeah, until he gets out. Yeah, we never out. will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was interesting to see yeah. to still see that and that they are actually pushing through with that. With you know, even if it was actually done, it's like what five years. Um, uh, like it's it's not a small a sentence. Yep. All right, uh, cool. So, oh, which one do you want to take? The FTX uh, or Craig Wright? Yeah, let's do FTX. Do the FTX for, for a let's small get amount that of time. One out of the way, yeah. I'm bored okay. with FTX. <laughs> I am too. That's right. So basically, it, yeah, yeah right. go ahead. No, no, I just, I, it's still relatively important. Like what some of the things you brought up are important. So let's let's just get a, let's go talk about them. But right, so basically, FTX. Um, maybe some context. So of course, they crashed during the last bear market. But in fact, their holdings appreciated since then. And now they have more than enough to actually refund people. So the people that are in charge of bankruptcy, uh, of leading the bankruptcy, uh, negotiated with the CFTC for months. And now they got to, a, to an agreement that they will distribute $12.7 billion um, to, uh, to their customers. And so basically... Um, they are, so this, this started and now they were going to distribute in money. So they were planning, mm -hmm. um, so let me read. So they, they were planning to give 98% uh, to creditors and then um, in dollars. And now the largest creditors are actually opposed to it. And on August 16th, it will be voted if they get the dollars or if they get the crypto. And if they get the dollars, that would mean that it would be even the bigger sale than Mongox, right? I don't know how much mm -hmm. is the Mongox sale in total. Uh, 123,000 Bitcoin, I think. Yeah, 122,000. Oh, yeah. 122, yeah. No, maybe it was 143 for a BTC. Or BC, mm -hmm. BCH. Can't even talk today. <laughs> Can't even talk. I don't know. So there's yeah. that. So I think that, yeah. that was that. Now, <laughs> so... I guess Craig Wright is uh, is following up on his uh, on his requirement to meet uh, to meet the judgments against him not, uh, that he has to say he's not Satoshi on like on a website's not enough apparently right you know more about this well I mean he's on Twitter he's posted on Twitter that uh, yeah. that he wrote exactly legal notice mm -hmm. Dr Craig Stephen Wright is not Satoshi Nakamoto and he writes out exactly legally what they asked him to do and he pinned it to his profile immediately under that pin so that pin started on the 17th so uh, right under that pin the post is um this is a requirement till until i appeal the decision posted by lb on behalf of csw so it doesn't really matter <laughs> he's still gonna fight this if you go to his website you could take a look at that it's the same thing they made him post it there and he's just gonna fight it anyway so he's going to i fully intend to appeal the decision on the court on the matter of the identity issue i don't really care he just can be quiet it doesn't really right matter. but it's kind of a cultural interesting thing like they so apparently he was trying to i don't know the 
past details of that judgment, but apparently we only had it on the website because the judge says, I do not consider an artist on its website on its own to be adequate. Since his primary yeah. mode of communication to those interested appears to be X Twitter or Slack channels. And so he had mm -hmm. to post there. So the judge yeah. now forced him to go and post on Twitter. I don't know if something like that was ruled before by a judge. So that's yeah, kind know. of interesting. Um, it's, and when you hit his homepage, it's the first thing. <laughs> yeah, and of course he's um, like fighting against it. So now I think he can still say, hey, but I disagree and I'll, I'll appeal. But I think once he will be rejected from appeal, I think he will not be able to put that code right beside and he will only be able, like we only have to put that he's not the founder of Bitcoin. So yeah. that would be interesting. Well, we'll see. It, it, it actually says on his webpage, based upon the legal notice, it says first yeah. that Dr. Craig Wright is not the author of the Bitcoin white paper. Second, Dr. White is not the owner of the copyright in the Bitcoin white paper. Third, Dr. Wright is not the person who adopted or operated under the pseudonym uh, Satoshi Nakamoto in the period between 2008 and 2000. I mean, they're really, I mean, they like, they hammered it. Yeah, so even when he loses the, uh, uh, the appeal, he's still going to post, I'm legally required to say the following. That, I mean, he's still going to do that, right? He still has all these people. If you watch, you are on Twitter, you can see all these people who are, are not swayed a single bit by the outcome of that legal proceeding, not even a bit. Um, and they are all, you know, they're all BSV holders and so forth. Um, and he will just keep it going as long as there's, as long as there's a, a, you know, a way to maintain his preeminence, you know, or his stature, uh, he will do it. Yeah. I'm sure I he suppose. benefits from it. He yeah. has a lot of mm -hmm. followers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many followers does he have on Twitter? He's got no, nah, he doesn't so have that like many. That. He's got 34,000. It's more than the three of us combined. Well, I, I admit that, but when you think about how much he's mentioned, how much you know he's in the news, he doesn't yeah. really have that many. Yeah, yeah I'll give you it. my zero followers. He mentioned. Yeah, I don't go for followers. I post what I post, it's my own yeah, personal me account. Me too. It's whatever I all right we are done with so I think, yeah we're done we're done yeah. with the news yeah. okay yeah. so yeah. i think yeah. the yeah. next part is something that we've talked about a few times in the last videos but i think that we can give a little bit more time to that because it is a critical mm -hmm. i think it's a critical topic moving forward you did a great job with the four Thank articles you. on marketing and maybe we can talk about those details like how it works well, because a lot of people would just not read the articles and i yeah, think it's good that we have it in the video too Definitely. Well, I, I, I think that a lot of people have to be encouraged that they're going to get some good consumable information out of it because the articles, I wouldn't just say they won't read it. They have to have an understanding of why they should have an interest in it. Yeah. Um, and But then they should also be told that these are, are as much as this con is condensed, it's not 20,000 words. These are very condensed concise little articles that's what they are they're yeah. good information it's consumable and there's four of them right yeah uh so let's see i, I was encouraged to write these i think neeg's actually you asked me like Sorry. we need this and, we, and thank you yeah the goal the goal there is to is to help people understand why marketing is important you cannot launch a coin you can't Anybody who goes into business for themselves knows you need to advertise somehow, even if you're advertising to your friends, right? You need mm -hmm. to, you can't just say I'm open for business and sit there and business comes in. So it, marketing is not new. Like it's, that's absolutely, if you want to start business and you want to sell stuff and you want to make money selling stuff, people have to know that you exist and, and you, they have to be convinced to buy your service or good. All crypto marketing is exactly that. And it, you know, it's not different than any other marketing. The different part, go ahead. Oh yeah, that's right. I think that yeah. um, we've seen the marketing kind of evolved in the last few decades, right? Initially mm -hmm. it was um, very rough um, and then it became a lot more directed to emotions and now it is directed to direct communication, I could say. And that's mm -hmm. why you see this influencer era where yes. they look like your friends, right? They're not, they're not your friends, mm -hmm. but they look like, they look like you. And then what they share, because people are 
they're really reliant on what other people say, right? They look for validation of what they think or contradiction of what they think to see and find their place, right? And and basically now the advertising industry understood that very well. And yeah. so you have, you have a very developed uh, field of advertising. And in crypto, it is targeted to what crypto users listen to, right? Yeah. And... And so, yeah, it, it goes into several different um, details. Maybe yeah. you want to go through that or maybe you want I, me to I do. I do. Yeah. I just want to do one, one more little analogy right. about how influencers came about. And I'm kind of appealing to the people who are my age because when we were younger, uh, these infomercials would come on and then there'd be this dude in a lab coat talking about yeah. like, I'm an expert in this field and you need to do this. And that expert, that was an actor with a lab coat on, right? That expert is what the influencer became, uh, what became the influencer, I should say. So now we go online and there are these people who, you know, I've been in crypto for this long. I, I understand crypto. I'm going to use these crypto words. Uh, so I am now the expert. And it, the weirder part, that's, the part that's weird now about it is not so much that there's this expert influencer person. It's that it's pushed at you. And that that's different. Um, we could, like, we are... Uh, in, we interact with social media in a way that TV and radio didn't do before. And so now there are there people who are feel normal. Where yeah. the, you see the bot star, TV star started to do what the influencers are doing today, right? Yeah. Like before there was the authority in the, and they were looking at the quality of the thing, but then it started to migrate to uh, people you were looking into. And now it, it's the people are, can be anybody, like anybody yeah. can be influencer now. It's not mm. just like influencers become uh, stars now. It's not yeah. stars that are, that are influencers. Like, you know, it, it kind of. And I think a lot of people. We were just talking about followers, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, right, right. That's right, how right, they get right, there. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I think a lot of people also caught on that um, what there's before social media and during social media, uh, the beginning of it, there was this another overlap that you're talking about where news and advertising were the same thing. Or like, and that, uh. so once that happened, now you know that advertising and news is the same thing. It kind of opened the door for anybody to be, you know, news, <laughs> right? And That's right. they're reporting That's right. their version of news. And their version of news is in this field. It's technology news. It's crypto news. It's uh, Beanie Baby news, whatever. I don't know. And so now that's now influencers grow. And influencers' job is to get followers. And they right. they absolutely can charge based on their how many followers there are, how many eyeballs. When I press post, here's how many eyeballs see it. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's there's value there. Definitely if you want to communicate what you're doing to, to eyeballs. It's gold. But I, exactly. I also right. want to say that there's a case where in, we would call them influencers because of, let's say, their follower count. Mm -hmm. But some influencers um, will get a return based upon services they offer, not just selling, you know, invest in X. And, and look, if we mm -hmm. look at some channels, even on YouTube, there's that guy who used to live in New York who now lives in Texas who does the Mac repairs, right? Mm -hmm. um, kind of an abrasive guy, but he's really good at what he does. And he repairs things and he goes to um, government and he tries to fight against the closed Apple system to where they yeah. can get parts and fix it. But the he's right got, to repair. Yeah. Yeah. Right to repair. So he fights for that. So there are people who are influencers. You could state that because of their following. But he's not um, he's not outright. What would I say? Shilling. That's right. probably what I would say. I think there's a difference between influencers who shill and pretended news and then share information based on discovery which is news and of course then providing a service which is built up because of course you are so open and share everything and do all sorts of things to create an environment where customers or clients eventually know you there's different kinds of influencers right so I don't know. And you, and you also the same influencer, I, like I just a couple triathlon influencers that I look at and they, they'll be clear. Like I got, I got to tell you guys, I really like this product. They're not, I bought this myself. They didn't send it to me. They're not paying me. They'll tell you that part. 
And then they don't tell you, they sent me this. I'm being paid to say this. You know, <laughs> they don't tell you that. That's a different kind. You know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's know? a different kind of influencer. Yeah. Now, even right. if you're paid to to review it, some influencers, look, I, I like YouTube. I watch a lot of videos. There are some people who talk about single board computers. Neeks, Neeks knows I go crazy over those things. Um, and then some of them will state, hey, so-and-so sent me this. They they gave it to me, essentially. I'm still going to review it against all the other things the same way, but they gave it to me. We still have to trust the fact that we think they're going to be unbiased. Yeah. Um, and, you know, based upon our experience with them, we can kind of vet that. But you're right. I think that yeah. some situations are... Hey, I'm reviewing this today, and you don't realize that they paid that person yeah. fifteen hundred bucks to review right. it. <laughs> but even they they're built get, some, yeah, and, fifteen thousand. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's not really. I think it's kind of a secondary topic. Like, obviously, we can talk about the bias of those reviewers, yeah. but I think what we really want to talk about is really the platform that they yeah. offer because that's what right. you really pay for right we need it right. you we, pay we, for we need those the eyeballs things, yeah. exactly like rob mm. was mentioning yeah. and and that's kind of the same thing um with a pr right when you want to do press release um mm -hmm. you basically have a lot of options too and again those also operate with revenue right that's how they pay yep. Uh, Correct. For everything, that's how they pay their wages. And so um, they need to make money. And the higher is their viewer count, the higher they will be able to sell their service. And that's exactly what's happening also in crypto. And what yep. you can see is also that crypto is a very competitive industry. So you you have only one homepage of uh, Cointelegraph, right? So you can't have everybody on the homepage every time. And so obviously it will make the cost of getting there higher than yep. if you were in an industry that wasn't as competing. So this is part of the of how it works. Now I think there are also other ways to be on those um, on those websites because um, the press release is really the more formal article that we push, where you can see at the bottom it's written press release. But you can see that some projects have a lot more coverage than others. So besides having a community that is, that is active. It is also based on the networking, based on how those are, you know, um, in collaboration with different projects and all that. You can see that all of those press companies, they have investment arms. So it is actually um, a very complex industry, the, the, press, um, the press around crypto. There's a bunch of different ways it happens. There's influencers, there's Twitter uh, kind of chat, like, channels are the wrong word, I guess, accounts that are constantly promoting various projects. There yeah. are, you can tweet stuff organically, you can tweet stuff through bots, you can tweet stuff through other channels. Telegram, on Telegram, there's all of these services that are, hey, you know, like, uh, join my Telegram group, learn about yeah. stuff. Um, there's a lot, the, art, the first article kind of goes over from a high view, all of them, the, kind mm -hmm. of the background of marketing, a, a high view of all of them. Uh, it continues where we're describing a project that we, you can see meme coins that you've heard of pay for uh marketing services there's not everything there's not an organic yeah. meme coin right that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't yeah really so happen. i think it's <laughs> important to make the difference right like until yeah. like the part that we just talked about now the influencers yeah. and the reviews and mm -hmm. pr is kind of even if it might sound new to you it's kind of the normal standard way but we have some kind of very new thing that is related mainly to social media that, that are about manufacturing uh, some organic activity around the project, right? Yeah. So I think it is a completely different thing than the things we just looked into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, the influencers kind of look like, appear like they have some interest. They probably, you know, acted. But uh, here it's a very different because it looks like you have users that are commenting. It looks like you have new subscribers um, yeah. And so, obviously, I was mentioning earlier that people are looking at others to decide what to do. And mm -hmm. once you know that, I mean, the, the whole field becomes very different, right? The whole activity yeah. that you see around your project 
has a lot of chance to be using some kind of those services. There are dozens of those agencies that are proposing those services. The other, yeah. the other new thing is uh, community. So, like in Divi, we've got, a, we've got. I would say it's a, rel- it's an organic community. We never paid for somebody to put people into our community, uh, as far as I know, but and certainly not recently. Um, but a lot, so you can pay these services to not just moderate your community, but to add members to it. Uh, and so it looks like there's more people there than are actually interested in your project. And now when you go, if I find out about a coin, I go into their community. Oh, 50,000 members. Holy moly. Yeah. This is very popular. And it's the same with number of followers and so forth. Like people look at those numbers and go, I'm missing out because all those people are in this. And it's, you know, it, there's a scale of veracity to the number of members, number of followers. <laughs> yeah, you can, you'll be surprised um, if you do that on Telegram. You'll all of a sudden go, what is this? And you'll come out, there's 75,000 members in there. And, yeah. And there really isn't 75,000 member quantity of conversation. Right. It's just <laughs> yeah. bots and shills and all sorts of things. That's right, because yeah. that's two different um, services. Like buying new members services. is yeah. one price, but then yes. buying people who are going to make uh, comments and be yeah. active is another price. And so you can imagine that those projects, when they start, they have thousands of new sure. users that are coming, and then you have activity for a couple months. And yeah. then after they're like, hey, 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 stop paying that. And we hope it took the organic path now. And yeah. usually um, it doesn't completely. Like it does a little bit, but yeah. not as much as the not completely as manufactured well, the, one. Of the other way they do it is to manipulate it. Now we're on another technical topic, but mm-hmm. with, with, where it's talking about, you know, you want to get confirmation bias um, because you're thinking something, you want something, and all of a sudden you see 50,000 people in there thinking about the same thing. You know, right. It helps you confirm certain things, but then you have certain tools and bots because people don't lock their accounts down. And what do they do? They copy every single user from a real channel, from a real cryptocurrency, from somebody really active, and they'll add every person they can to that channel. So all of a sudden it's yep. pre-populated with real people, or at least mostly real people. Um, yep. Those are, I think those are kind of illegitimate services. I agree, but, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah but that's, that's it, it can do it. Thing. So at a high, the first article at a high level goes over each of those things, the Telegram investors, the community stuff, the, is the that down the services. Marketing, is that down the marketing still, rabbit hole? Uh, the first one is simply called the reality, uh, the reality that crypto projects don't want you to know. Uh, uh, it's just me, my little hook to get people that's in the here. first one. You know? So, that's the first so one, everybody yeah. remember that the reality yeah, I, that crypto yeah. projects don't want you to know. That's right. Yeah. So make sure so, you take a look at that. So this is just oh. talking about how, how marketing is different now, mm-hmm. high level descriptions of the services and an example of like where you can almost see when marketing services got, got deployed and a coin mm-hmm. going, going nuts after that. The second article uh, is just the next three articles are just going down the rabbit hole. So I dive deeper into each of the services. So the second article focuses on Telegram investor, quote unquote, channels, (laughs) shilling Mm. services and uh, viral marketing campaigns on Telegram, Twitter followers like they'll, you know, I've if uh, Divi has a has a Twitter account, they'll attach, you know, you know, uh, some different numbers of followers, depending on how much you pay to it. Uh, and then also getting micro influencers. So low end influencers to just retweet stuff from Divi. I'm go- if I talk about this in regard to Divi for all of these things. Um, so yeah. the second article just dives deeper into each of those things. Um, so you can understand more what it is, examples of them and so forth, what the difference between the different prices are. So like there's a there's an eight thousand dollar and a ten thousand dollar version of shilling services, so you can see <laughs> what the differences are. And those are direct messages, those annoying things that you get, right? Like hi, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, hey, can I talk to you about crypto? Yeah, that's a marketing, you know, it's a scammer or a marketing person just trying to get word out. That's what those are. Um, Twitter followers, right. as I said, so it dives down into those the third the second there is a forty five thousand dollar package for five yeah. million discord dms imagine right is that the se- is that in the second one that's <laughs> right. the second one it's nuts the right? second one was also yeah. tied to uh somebody discovering or at least uh another major chain um 
that was part two of the rabbit hole, which is the third article. That's part is, two, yeah. Yeah, so I'm seeing. Makes, I'm so excited. Yeah. I've read them. I never, I, I never do so well. Yeah, I just, <laughs> I didn't really, I didn't know what I was doing up front. So there's the first article, and then three rabbit hole articles. The second rabbit hole article has a big, big part about polka dot, which. It was such great timing because I was talking about this stuff. I was talking about the influencers, the shillers, how you pay marketing things. And then it leaks that Polkadot has a $37 million bar, uh, budget for doing exactly this. And it was fun on Twitter because you could see the schlocky uh, uh, influencers that they were paying. And it was an amazing amount of money. I mean, yeah. to me. Uh, I So... Details of of that marketing campaign uh, are listed in in this article. I mean, yeah. that was crazy. For, it's it's crazy uh, because then you were wondering why. If you get on this list, I yeah. know maybe forty percent of the names that are on this list, and mm -hmm. some of them have really big follower follower counts. Yeah, um, some of them maybe not so much so. But you wonder why everybody around a certain time frame or a certain certain uh, we'll say it an epoch in crypto history, they were mm -hmm. always talking about a specific blockchain. Right. It was always worked into every conversation. Yes. Somehow it ended, it began with it was worked in there. And now yeah. you know why. Oh, yeah, we should say we are not paid by so when I talk about cosmos in a positive way or polka dot or whatever, we're not paid. We're not paid. We the, I think we're the only ones. <laughs> You should look to get paid. Yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> Neeks yeah. is paid. We pay Neeks. Yeah. He says good things about us. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting um, yeah. one dollar per year. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but like, I think that it's also interesting to talk about, like, the mechanism, right? Like, in reality, it's not bad or good to use do those ways. Like, those ways, they are here. Yeah. Right, and yeah. you can use to prop up your scam coin, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can use to actually get your project in front of new eyes, right? Yeah, it sure. is very important. And unfortunately, there is this bias where if nobody talks about something, then it's not great. And right. so those kind of um, services could definitely uh, help you break some kind of ceiling like that where yeah, okay. people kind of see talking about it and then it kind of gives them the motivation to go on your website and be like hey maybe maybe i'll get more interest into that coin see how it works see the technology that they are coming with and if you don't have this presence then it is very difficult to to reach a new yep. audience so yeah, yeah so those services can be used for bad or for good Right. Yeah, it's well, not, I'm not, it's not a that choice. What Polkadot did was bad mm. either. Yeah, I'm, oh, it's I'm, just amazing. We can, <laughs> right. we can. I mean, I think talk they to the point of whether or not million. those influencers would have admitted that they were being compensated. Right? <laughs> did they all admit right. that? I haven't watched yeah. all of their videos. Did they know. admit that they were compensated at when they were essentially dropping the the notes? Again, that's not a polka dot issue. That is an influencer issue. But so, so much I'm, as I think now, right? Yeah. That they yeah. influencers with with pricing and all that. I mean, it's not yep. a secret anymore, really. No. It's not I a secret. It's not a secret. But when you talk about bad, we'll say most of them are tokens, right? Because you can launch a a platform, and I'll make it clear. I want everybody to pay attention. I'll be very cautious on the terms I use. Blockchain, like Bitcoin or Divi, right, which is what we're talking about most of the time, those are protocols. Those are blockchains. When you talk about tokens, things that live on Ethereum, things that live on Solana, things that live on Base, things that live on Binance Smart Chains, those are not blockchains. Mm -hmm. Those are platforms. Yeah, They are tokens that can only exist on the blockchain they're deployed anybody can spin up a token and there's examples where they have anybody can spin up a token a meme coin for nothing and then get the right fomo behind it doing methods like this in communities like that and then it pumps that token up that meme coin up it explodes 
maybe the community does it, maybe the team does it, and then everybody's gone. That's the sad thing about it. It's mm -hmm. you, for those who get in and out early enough, that's fine. They're happy. They made money. If they're like me, if you're like me, you're like, oh, this seems fun. I'll I'll get some of these NFTs or coins or tokens, excuse me, tokens, and then I still have them, you know, yeah, eight years later. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're just, they're yeah. just dead tokens. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think yeah. what we were seeing with Polkadot is a little bit different. However, no, I think it's, it's, it's not a good just blockchain, influencer. Right? I think those guys, it looked like those guys were kind of on the on the payroll, right? Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. like hey, yeah. we're doing this um, initiative because we want people to know about it, yeah. and we want we want. And instead, here it's really constant presence to like they were basically brand advocate for Polkadot, yeah. right? That's why. Yeah, it, yeah it well, that's like. again up to the influencer what they're willing to agree to and that it, and then disclose and i think that's coming down to the ethics of the influencer now if the if the foundation right the foundation who is is using those coins to sell those coins or give those coins tokens away is asking them not to disclose now you're in a different thing, and I, 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 I wouldn't think that that was the case. But uh, and again, I, think I don't it have is enough a information. Bit more I think thin line because, in fact, look, if we have something that we start like, look, we have the side chain. We want to talk about side chain, and we can yeah. go regularly uh, to some influencers so that we repeat about side chain, you know, regularly. But then, if you have those influencers on the payroll so that they constantly talk about it. They're not just introducing your concept and reaching your audience. They're basically hammering your thing. I think it's a little bit different than just some advertising. I think now you you kind of get into, a, again, some brand advocacy, and maybe it should be even more disclosed in those situations. But yeah. yeah. I, so again, the thing think, about Polkadot that I find ahead. amazing is, is not so much that, that there's anything wrong with what they did or the fact that these marketing agencies were used. I Just the scale is amazing. And, and a lot of the stuff the scale, is, yeah. I'm not sure that there's any payback from it. So for example, they paid, I can forget the number for the F1 car, but they paid $200,000, $2.1 million for an F1 car, right. $200,000 to get branding on a, on a fleet of jets. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that the marketing agency kind of social media stuff is effective and things like that, but I'm not sure things like that are. And you definitely see some improvements in various metrics about Polkadot from this. Yeah. Uh, the staking rate rose. Uh, there's increase in DAO proposals. So all I'm saying is like for this year, you can see this big jump in price in March. When everything else jumped, right? Bitcoin jumped, everything jumped. Uh, so I don't know if you can contribute that can, uh, contribute that as the to the um, uh, marketing stuff. But it doesn't look like prices went. There's other stuff that did improve, I think, since this marketing campaign started. And hope and the idea I think is in the future is like once you lay groundwork and get kind of infrastructure improvements in terms of people coming to it and so forth. That later you you see the reap the rewards of that. So I I I think the jury's still out on whether the thirty seven million dollars was worth it. But yeah, there, I, to me it just looks like there's a bunch of. Uh, kind so of they started party this time. year, <laughs> yeah. right? You're saying that they yeah. started just at the no, beginning of this year. No, we just know that those yeah. thirty seven million for are yeah. for one year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. It was good. Um, it was a good serendipity thing. The second article continues uh, diving into what the different uh marketing um services are like moving up the chain in terms of getting into more into influencers and less yeah. just followers and things like that and then the last one uh talked more dive into like bigger packages uh about what you know combining things and so forth so if you really want to understand like what you can buy and what you know what you get for different prices of money that's what all of these articles are for now, I think what you stress uh, quite a bit in some of yours is smarmy. <laughs> yeah. And everything I mean, crypto is. social media is mm -hmm. fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's true. And as yeah. Neegs and I will debate things and we'll talk yeah. about marketing and advertising is always fake to some degree. Every single commercial on my TV 
and I don't have regular TV, but if you watch yeah. an ad on a television and you see a hamburger pop up or you see, a, 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 well, I'm just using junk food as an example because mm -hmm. it, it, it's frustrating. If you watch a Subway sandwich ad, the sandwich is huge. I mean, it's <laughs> stacked. It's like four and a half inches thick with everything in it. Then you go in. <laughs> it's nothing like that. I mean, so... I agree somewhat with what Neegs would state that some of the stuff is just plain fake. But the point is, is that that's the way yep. the world turns. You have to get your name out there somehow. You just can make choices on yeah. how you do it, I suppose. Subway or Firehouse Subs wouldn't have, or, or Jimmy John's or whatever, wouldn't have anybody in their restaurants if they had really you know, thinly loaded meats and vegetables and everything, lettuce and everything on those things. So they have to show it overly stuffed just to get you in the door, I suppose. I don't know. But like you said earlier, right? I don't like it. People like Louis Rossman, who definitely, yeah. you know, is, is not trying to scam you or, but then look, even when you hold the currency and then you go tell somebody else about this currency, you, you're definitely biased, right? So it is like that when you hear people talking about Bitcoin, they most likely not paid for it, but they expect their Bitcoin to appreciate, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It is, it is the way it works. Um, so it's more about how can we use that uh, in our advantage to spread our message where it didn't hit yet, which is mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, and I think that there, there is definitely a major opportunity there. And yeah, I think that's why we were, or at least I was, um, very, um, <laughs> I think I was pushing you to write those articles because yeah. <laughs> Rob is a very good writer, much better than I, I can write. And so that's yeah. why I was really like, Hey, please, can you, mm -hmm. can you do that? Because I, yeah, I but kind of I think this gonna research be... on different marketing agencies. Yeah, and we're going to, I mean, it's not a secret. We're, we're going to try as community members to, to get an effort going to help pay for some of these services. If right. we can sit here and good. wallow in, in, in the way Divi is, or we can try to fix it. So one way to fix it, which I think is kind of low brain method, is like, let's just tell people to buy it, you know, in our community, <laughs> right? And it's just like... Buy it's not more. even feasible, right? <laughs> like if everybody bought some, it would go up, but it, you'll go up for five seconds. That's exactly that was what show sites thing, do. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> what we need to do is like, we have a rock solid blockchain. We have features in our yes. blockchain that don't exist elsewhere. Vaulting is amazing. Now we've got other blockchains copying our way of doing vaulting. Good. Like that should be out there. And so we have those things. No, we're in this problem where you start a business and nobody knows about it. We need to tell the thing we need to do is to, you know, group together, get some funds going for marketing efforts. And I think we're gonna think it's good. we're gonna have a we're gonna have a blog post on it. Uh, we'll have a DAO proposal uh, for different marketing efforts. But we need to be gathering some some change from everybody to right. to participate in these services. There's not another way. Yeah. Um, so that's what we need. And, then, and you know, yeah. ICOs did that in the right. beginning because everybody was searching for ICOs. Yeah. And what did everybody do? Everybody shilled everything to everybody else. Every friend that you had, you shilled it. I mean, I hate to say that because I hate the. If, since hate the day it. you've met me, yeah. you've known how much I me hate the, the the word shill. I, I don't think it's idea. shilling if you're excited about something and you truly believe in it. You could call yeah. yourself a zealot or whatever you want to call yourself. Um, you could just say, you know, you're excited about something. If you're talking about something you're familiar with, that's a good thing if you're shilling it just to trick somebody into something. See, I said trick. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. I think we <laughs> need marketing. We need marketing. We need it to be in the eyeballs of other people that are interested, or maybe they're not knowing yet that they're interested in such projects. We have to have two things going. We have to have marketing, and then we have to have usability, right? So that means some of those features that are coming, like side chains, They'll come out iterative, iteratively. Um, they all need to be promoted together. And the community has to be behind it. The community also has to use it. I'll do videos about it. We hope other people do videos about it. We hope those things get shared. That's where the excitement comes out. When we're excited about it, I know you're excited about it, Rob. I know yep. Neegs, you're excited about it because we can see the inner workings of the engine. 
we've played with the inner workings of the engine. It's pretty exciting. Um, and I think that's okay. I think that kind of speak is good. That's right. But I think in, in reality, in a community, you have a very, very, very small part who is really involved, knows the technology, understand, looks into new, new options. And yeah. then you have a very, very large part who doesn't know much, right? And, and very clearly, <laughs> and it's not interested to know about that. It doesn't mean that those people are dumb. Like some people yeah. are very smart, but they just, they just don't want to know about it. They don't have the mm-hmm. time. It's not part of their passion. They have way too much other things to do. Many reasons, right? And it is uh, the larger past part of any community in any industry, right? And so that's, that's why we have to be able to reach those people. Those people, they rely on influencers, other people talking about the project. And so we have to generate all that. And I think that's, that's the best path. And yep. with the exchange listing that we're looking into that we talked about last time, I think it's definitely um, coming back strong so that from the outside, we look like we're strong. Our new narrative is here with this new technology that will re- we believe revolutionize uh, the way like interaction is made on blockchain and so i think that we really have a solid uh, offering and then we really need to get it to new people and that's the path yeah, yeah. let's move so on we to have questions both, right? cool let's go let's move, yeah i think we should move on to questions yes wait i want i want to just make this <laughs> you go if, if you've <laughs> listened this much you're here to this point the most important point you could do is not just listen to us, read Rob's articles. The first article, marketing, the reality that crypto projects don't want you to know. It sounds negative, but there's good information in there. And then the other three articles are down the marketing rabbit hole part one, down the marketing rabbit hole part two, and down the marketing rabbit hole part three. So take a look at those four articles. If you don't have the link, just look below this um, this video here that you're watching. Uh, if it's the main video, the release video for the Divi updates, um, I'll have a link there to all four articles, and uh, then you can take a peek. Awesome. Sorry. Thank you, boys. Mm-hmm. So we have a few questions um, and statements. Uh, so let's just go through this. Can I read this first one? Uh, of course. The long one. Uh, on the list is the second one because the first one's not a question. The first one was cheerleading. Yay, interoperability for more creativity. Okay, so thank you, uh, Miss <laughs> Yulo. <laughs> Appreciate Yulo, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so somebody said for now is good. Um, and I want to, so, because there's a lot in here and I, and I, I want to do all this. So he, he doesn't like, he says, I don't like, the, he or she he says, I don't like the puppets. New people looking at this would be hard pressed to take it seriously. Uh, well, that's one thing I want to spend time addressing. I don't know where Divi is going or if it'll come back in price. I don't feel like there's a clear path for actually producing something other than ideas of how cool this project is. How about a little hopium or proof of life of where Divi is going? Um, so there's, there's two parts here. Uh, I want to do the second part first. We'll come, we've talked about avatars in the past. Yeah, and, many times. And, and the second part is, I, 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 my feeling is that for now is good hasn't watched all the other videos or any of the other videos that's what i feel exactly yeah exactly but i understand right is is always there right our hope like i i hate calling it hopium because it's real and it's on the way but you know the divi right now has cool features to be an you know exchange of value um, but it doesn't have cool features like ethereum and cosmos and so forth that have smart contracts that allow really customized utility yeah. And these, the side chains is what that is. And the better part is, as we spoke about in this episode here, is that the way to move your funds there is, is trustless. It's safe. It is, it, it's not a bridge. And the friction to create scams there is high and expensive. And the, so that makes the entire environment for doing create creative things, doing uh, uh, services, providing services for, for money and so forth is way better than it ex- it will exist or that it currently exists in other blockchains. That's, That's or I'll be blunt. I, it's basically yeah. like Bitcoin, but for interoperability, right? 
So how I explain it, and Neegs, you hit it perfectly. I say what we do is Satoshiized. It is (laughs) Satoshi (laughs) in ethic. It's Satoshi in protocol. It is Satoshi where when you talk about these other ecosystems, these other para situations, I sort of in a gray area will push off, but some of them I will just say those are Vitalik philosophy. Mm-hmm. It's not exact, but it's not Satoshi philosophy. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I see, sure. I see where you so see stuff you on blockchain thing. instead yeah. of the service being the blockchain, which is what we're doing. Right, um, and we talk about uh, things that are only possible with that model uh, being mm-hmm. trustless. So, for example, I think when we talked about the data provider, the decentralized data provider that would be provided by the validators that would mm-hmm. be rewarded what private companies like Infura, Block, Cypher, or whoever provide those services is actually making today. So we're talking really billions of dollars of market. I I think that this is a pretty big um, opium, if I could say that, because yeah. I, it was part yeah. of the question, it is. right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, all of this takes time. Um, it takes a lot of money to develop all that, obviously. And so that's also why we're working with that partner. But that's also why we want to talk about this marketing. We want also to have more eyes on us, to have more people interested. It would also yeah. allow the project to definitely achieve things faster. Yeah. So let me just hit the first part now. Um, okay, we let's... mentioned it, but we don't mention it every time. But look, uh, not every, I'm not one of these people, but I, I'm doing this with people who are, have reservations about exposing their privacy. And I think that's totally fair. And it's one of the features of being in crypto altogether. And I think it should be respected. This is the happy medium um, that, that we're doing. And uh, if you if you really don't like the looking of the puppets, I feel like you can do sound to use my other avatar now. Yeah, you can. Uh, you can do uh, right. <laughs> Go ahead. Listen to it as a podcast. Yeah, you can listen to it as a podcast. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I. That is why we do it this way. This is the happy medium. I made an avatar that looks as close to me as I can with this software. Next week, I may have even better. So- we may even use Neeks, better software. Neegs has it on right now. Neegs is pretty. Neegs is pretty close. You know, and take it like that. <laughs> um, maybe new people were looking at this. Can't, won't take it seriously up front, but we talk about serious uh, things. We take uh, what we're talking about seriously. Uh, we're not sitting here making fart jokes. Uh, I mean, maybe one has slipped out. Oh, that was a little nice wording there. And uh, <laughs> uh, but for the most part, you know, we take our project serious. We take doing this seriously. I mean, the topics we talk about are serious. So I'm not sure what I'm not sure how I can move the happy medium in a way that works for everybody. Mm-hmm. But that's why we do it. And we've been in the community for how long? Since it started. Since it started. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Since the beginning. That's right. Started. No, but yeah. I understand the question for yeah. for new people, right? Uh, it's a valid people. concern. Yeah, but then, I mean, it is crypto. So, look, um, are people turned off by the face of Satoshi, right? Are right. Uh, like I don't think that it should be actually. Uh, focused on the face of people. I think that we should really be judged on what we're doing. And really, we're not we're not even founders. That's also something that I wanted to address no. here. So yeah. we're put this is our I, own time. We're um, volunteering I think for that this time. When Voice mentioned we're community member, I think it's not complete. But we're not founders either, right? We're clearly no. trying to head a direction which is the sidechain direction, right? But it, it doesn't mean it's the only direction of DV or that it will only be the, the only thing that will happen. I was talking in Discord about that, and I do yeah. expect that whenever we will have the sidechains coming, a lot more people would be interested about building on DV. And whenever people build on something, then they will be interested to influence on its direction. Obviously, right now, there's only us who are pushing for that. But I mean, the foundation is... Um, intended to be able to serve the purpose of DV and not serve the purpose of one group of individual, right? Correct. So, Well, the foundation, you know, we're not talking about people, but we're also talking about developers. All of that comes together. I don't want to digress, but I saw your comments or earlier in Discord, and that was one of the things you're, you were speaking about. Maybe it was yesterday or the day before, but 
the foundation is an entity, but it, it doesn't really have people in it. There is a person over it, but it doesn't really have people in it. And the foundation itself should be agnostic. Um, it shouldn't right. support one developer over another one initiative. Its whole entire idea would be to do things beneficial for Divi the blockchain, right? That's, that's essentially what it would be. Yeah. However, and whatever, and whoever builds on it, um, it sh the foundation shouldn't care about. We as a community may be empowered or may be interested in doing those kinds of things. So this comes back to us. And when we do these kinds of things, you can do them too. I mean, everybody can do something. If you want to, yeah. I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying well, speaking if you of wanted to. Divi doing something, uh, yeah, the next comment we can speed is... It up for the next questions. Yeah, the, the next comment... Well, actually, it was thanks for the update. More on the Divi DAO. Divi DAO is how people can do stuff. Yeah, um, right. We are going to create a... Uh, we have a web page, but we're going to create a web page that um, allows people to see uh, donated funds for marketing and for development. And as, mm -hmm. we, as those numbers go up... Uh, in those buckets, we'll, you know, us or anyone can put a a proposal in for the DAO and say, should we spend this much of the of the funding on this effort here? And we'll vote on those. And if they say no, then the bucket will keep going higher, uh, and then we'll do another one. Um, so that so that's getting involved. Uh, getting involved is putting uh, funds into those efforts. Getting involved is you know, making proposals. Right now, we don't have a great mechanism. If you have a proposal, send it to me. Um, and, uh, especially if it's a marketing or <laughs> development one. Yeah. It's the part <laughs> I hate. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, which is, it would be great to see us on rice crypts, rice crypto. I also yeah, said I rice crispies last time. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I think it's a reiteration. Like this was, this yeah. is just the second time because yeah. it's actually an answer yeah. to us mentioning that of course, that if, we if go, you yeah, know yeah. anyone, yeah. um, if you're a fan of any specific influencer, again, there are some really good influencers out there. I've yeah. spoken to Rice more than a handful of times. Um, if you want any one of us to visit, to talk about anything that's coming in Divi's blockchain, some of the feature sets, some of the future things, um, we're more than happy to, to be there. You just yep. ask that influencer, we will be there, put us together, we will happily do that. All right, one right. more for Mr. Sean, 1984. Can B can Bitcoin? Yeah, can Bitcoin? Thank you, Sean. <laughs> uh, nice. Can BTC miners use their machines to validate transactions on Divi sidechains? Could this <laughs> be a possible business? So here's the thing: I, it's a computer, right? And so technically, I, I assume the answer is yes. I suspect, though, BTC miners, uh, especially with the ones that are ASICs, that'd be very more, much more difficult. Right, but. Even if it use, wasn't yeah. an ASIC, yeah, even if it wasn't an ASIC in there, um, would you want to uh, deploy any of your compute away from the mining, even if it's a small amount? So I suspect there's a way to make those machines work because I think there's an ASIC and also a controlling microprocessor in the controlling microprocessor, maybe. But I suspect <laughs> you don't you don't want any of the attention uh, put Okay, so I think away. I have opium here. Wait. Yeah, opium. <laughs> yeah. I have opium for ma uh, max Bitcoin maximalist. Yeah. yeah. So the side chain, um, I don't think can reward miners. I think that uh, mining on Bitcoin is only done by ASICs. Otherwise, it's just not working. And then world, yeah, you have yeah. a custom OS and it's not going to run um, probably the software that we would be running for the side chain. However, what it can reward is the Bitcoin node holder. Correct. And currently, um, Bitcoin node is not paid. And that so what true. we bring with Sidechain is actually some possibility for Bitcoin node holders to get rewarded for having a node, a Bitcoin node. Yeah. Wouldn't that be crazy? Everybody, I told you I have a node. There's a node here on my other computer to my right. And it's a full... Bitcoin node. It is supporting Bitcoin miners. That's how they validate their data. They have to have their own nodes too. Those miners need a source of that data, but this node doesn't do anything for me except store the complete history of Bitcoin from Satoshi's first transaction until now. 
I, I just I just run it. It's an you could call it an altruistic thing, but go ahead, Meeks. Tell us what can happen with my altruistic node that doesn't earn me anything except the feel goodness that I'm running it right now. What's going to happen? But yeah, so potential? in the sidechain environment, as a validator of the sidechain, if you have, um, like if it was a sidechain that would be also connected to Bitcoin, then you would get rewarded for whenever you validate transaction. Exactly. Right. You'd so be, that's, you'd be um, rewarded in you'd be reward, rewarded in Divi. That's right. So it depends, yeah. of course, the model, right? Because the sidechains mm -hmm. are not limited to Divi. So obviously right. the mm -hmm. ones that we deploy would end up in Divi. But Correct. you have like really many options. But obviously our, our goal is to come up with use case that would already be basically um, filling all, fulfilling all the needs. And so we, we expect to have like a DV solution from the get go yeah. when things go live. Yeah. I, I just, I, I fear that if, if people haven't listened to all the episodes, they might not understand this. And you mentioned Infura before, but if you have a, if you, if uh, you have a light wallet or, or a multi-coin light wallet, those wallets work by asking Infura for information or, or competitors. And what Infura does is they've got nodes on all those coins and they ping those nodes for the information that you're looking for. And those wallets are paying the, that company for that service. We think that's a sidechain service. So if you uh, have, if you have a node, you, you hook it up into this side chain and people, instead of paying in Fura would pay in Divi this side chain for that same information. And then since you are a supplier of that information, you get paid when they pay that same amount, so like, or perhaps it's competitive to ensure it in and it's less, but boy, uh, that's, a, that's an amazing way to decentralize that service away from a single entity. That's right. And yeah. yeah, and, and, and again, and the thing is that now you can, um, have people get paid for providing this network and as they can offset the cost of their machine by hosting several different side chains. Now the cost for operation, the operational costs go down, uh, the operational cost per validators goes down and then the profitability goes up and we can expect that once the system becomes mature, it will also be a better financial opportunity for uh, companies who are actually going to get the service from Infra and Block Servers and, yep. and all of those. Yeah. So it Beneficial is, I think, incentivization. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it's a Let's... major business case, a major opportunity. Um, and yeah, as you were saying, Rob, it's a bit complex and we kind of kind of go, have to go through that probably several times. And probably, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have time for that. Oh, I mean, oh, yes. one video Eventually every we'll two have... week. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So every time we have a, a sidechain idea, it's, it's, it's hard not to dive down into it because we're, we and mo most people are, are used to like an app doing the thing or a platform doing the thing or a smart contract doing the thing. And all of those, as we said, we're trying to get away from these centralized methodologies and to think of how to do the thing on a side chain that provides that sing singular service. It's weird and it's hard. And it's, you know, there's parts to consider that are different. So that's why you kind of have, we tend to dive down a little bit more into how it works. The next one is, um, this you can person, tie them together, I think, too, because they're about the same. Uh, I guess so. This is just uh, just Stone Sim. Hmm. I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong. Nine nine seven. Uh, he thinks uh, or she thinks that um, the news when we do the news, we should tie it to Divi, unless it's like super important. Uh, I hope you noticed that we tr we did that to some degree. Not every single thing we talked about was tied to Divi, um, but with I think it's a valid concerned like maybe we blather on yeah. too much about something that's not too important and not related yeah. to Divi. I think it was also in our last video where yeah. we kind of asked feedback after one hour of new <laughs> segment, news, right? Yeah. So yeah, that was episode I, I eight. Every time coming. we try to have um at some at least cultural uh, connection yeah. with crypto or legal situation with crypto and I mean we focused on I think U.S. regulations because it's uh, most of the user base. Um, we do also look into EU regulation. We looked into that CBDC uh, last time. Yeah. So mm. I think it does have um, some relation. 
today we looked into that hack um that hacker went to make a presentation in North Korea. So mm -hmm. I see how this is not related to TV, but in a way it is really related to the all the cultural aspect around blockchain Crypto. and the progress mm -hmm. in the minds of people, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Same person, I agree. Oh, go ahead. Same person asked, uh, said that it, with regard to market making and liquidity, it makes more sense to increase liquidity on existing exchanges. exchanges. Why pay to list a new one when we're not maximizing what we're already on. Um, actually, Neeks, you I think you should answer this. You've got yeah, so I hear your that. finger on um, the pulse. I yeah. think that's also um, an answer to our request for feedback, where we were mm -hmm. asking what people wanted to do if they wanted to push on the current exchanges or have new ones. I don't think it's either or. I think that we we'll need both. But at the end of the day, if we if we push for the existing exchange, there will need to be a move from the community, show their interest. Um, so it's great to see one person saying that we should boost those exchanges. I think we should see a lot more people saying that before we start to commit in that direction. Um, but yeah, exchanges uh, are also going to be a big part of uh, the next conversation. It is in parallel with the marketing effort. Um, and so, yeah, uh, give us more feedback. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you for giving me We do feedback. appreciate it. I appreciate think it's it. Definitely. Just one sim. I'm not, I'm not sure. What? Oh, just one sim. Thank yeah, you. I think, I yeah, think just sim. one sim. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Nick's got that because he's like 30 years younger than both of us. Yes, because I right. wasn't talking. So I, I could <laughs> read. Yeah, no. You know? Uh, I think that's it for all of us. Uh, that was, that's well, it? we covered everything we we're going to talk about I today. I think so. Yeah, we still, yep. we still went. went quite long actually so i'll see yeah. i'll see how it is at the end but we did cover some new segments that i think mm -hmm. were pretty relevant the marketing that i think is really critical please yeah. um get interested into that um even if it's just for you to be more safe in that environment understand that you might be influenced by um people comments that are actually not um uh, uh, I would say genuine, right? And so, mm. yeah, just for that and see why we're doing that. And and I mean, if you don't take part, you will also see how it works because um, we're, we're pretty convinced that it is a, it is a solution that is actually going to work very well for TV. <clears throat> how about that? How about everybody who reads the articles? You tag us afterwards on the YouTube videos and tell us the creepy things that you found in every single one of the article's images. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Which one were you most surprised yes. by? Which yeah. service uh, little shocked weird you the everywhere. most? Everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell what you what mine is. You see, that I, was strange in Rob's uh, images. Let's let's say that article. next time. Sure, 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 definitely. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, guys. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. See you next Thank time. Thank you. <laughs>